Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Today, we are finishing up the Liberty Wall Sampler. I'm going to bring you along as we create the layers of this quilt, as we baste this quilt, quilt this quilt, and bind this quilt. Let's get started by taking a look at our quilt backing. Because of the size of this quilt, I'm just going to baste everything right here on my work table. For my back, I did piece A backing. I just grabbed a couple of larger pieces of leftover patriotic fabric that I had and I sewed it together until it was quite larger than my quilt top. I'm going to start by putting that pretty side down. For my quilt, I have decided to double the batting. I'm using an 80-20 batting. Most of the time I use a single layer. However, I wanted the quilting to really pop on this quilt. So I'm going to double the layers of my batting and lay that out nice and flat. And now we can bring in the quilt top. We're just going to make sure that we have backing and batting that extends beyond all four sides of our quilt top. We'll smooth everything out and then you're going to baste your quilt. For my basting, I'm going to thread baste this quilt. Because of the two layers of batting, I usually glue baste my quilts, but with the two layers of batting, I thought that might get a little bit tricky. I really did not want anything to shift around in the middle of this quilt or for my backing to get little puckers and folds. So using a longer needle and just some polyester thread, I've doubled the thread over, tied a knot at the end, and I'm doing just some large stitches to base this quilt. I don't even tie the knot once I've run out of thread. I just cut it, re-thread my needle, and keep on going. I'm going to uh, baste each one of these blocks individually. So as I'm quilting, I can just remove the basting stitches block by block as I get each one of those sections quilted. Now we're going to be spending about 38 minutes together in this video as I bring you through each one of the steps to finish up this quilt. Now some of you know how to baste your quilt so you could skip right past this. Some of you have already quilted your quilt <laughs> so you can skip past that. I, I'm going to show you each one of the blocks as I quilt them. Just as a suggestion, I think the quilting is really going to come down to what you uh, prefer to do, your taste, your skill level. You might even decide to hand quilt this. I wish I had the patience to do that. So now that it is all basted, you'll notice I have my walking foot on. Because of the two layers of batting, I really needed that walking foot to move all of these layers through that machine. So I'm going to start off by doing a stitch in the ditch between each of the blocks. And you'll notice I'm starting sort of in the middle of the quilt at the bottom of the Liberty block and working my way to the edge of the quilt. Rotating everything around, coming back to the middle, and working my way to the edge of the quilt. And I just keep repeating this until each one of the individual blocks has been stitched all the way around. At this point, I'm still leaving in my thread basting stitches. And I'll just bring you along as I stitch in the ditch between each one of these blocks.
This seam here is the last stitch in the ditch seam that I have left to do and I'm just going from the right side of the quilt all the way over to the left side. Now I'm going to switch over to the free motion foot and I've decided uh, I would start with the Liberty block. For this block I thought I would stitch around each one of the letters. And then I'm just going to have a lot of fun with the design and the fabric quilting around each one of the stripes in that fabric. I use uh, the stitch in the ditch around the block and the stitch around the letters to travel from stripe to stripe. And when I come to those basting stitches, I just pull them out so that I don't stitch over top of them. And I'm just working from the bottom of this word up towards the top. I really wanted to bring you along for each one of these blocks uh, individually, even though I'm speeding up and really uh, trying to move along quickly for each one of these blocks. I thought it might be uh, interesting if you're wondering, what did I do to quilt these blocks? Maybe this will inspire you or give you some ideas. Even if you don't quilt your blocks exactly the same way that I do, uh, maybe just something will inspire you and give you an idea. You can see those longer basting stitches just easily pull right on out. But they're doing a fabulous job of keeping all of these layers in place as I'm moving everything around. Coming back in the down the other side, quilting everything that I missed as I worked my way up towards the top of the quilt. And in just a second, we will be finishing up quilting this block. Now we're going to move down to the hope block. And I thought I would keep this one super simple. I'm just going to stitch around each one of the letters. And for this block, that's all I'm going to do is stitch around each one of the letters individually and leave the background just the way that it is. Finishing up this block, I think that looks pretty fantastic. Now we're gonna move over and quilt the great big star block. I'm gonna start out by stitching around the star. We'll just anchor that right in place. I'm going to start removing some of the basting stitches and for this block I'm just going to do a little bit of a looser meandering in the background. As I approach each one of the different sections of this block I remove the basting stitches. And I used a white thread to base this block so it would be nice and easy to see those stitches.
Once the background is all quilted, I'm going to bring in a heat erasing pen and give myself some markings in the center of this star. And then I will quilt those. Once the quilt is all finished, these marks will erase when I just lightly iron over top of them. And sometimes I like to just draw out my quilting pattern to help me stay uh, focused and not mess up while I'm quilting. So I'll just draw in a quilting pattern. That finishes up this block. Next, we'll move over to the section with the red and white stripes. For this block, I'm going to do a stitch in the ditch in between each one of these stripes. And then in the white stripes, I'm just going to do some match stick quilting, some close back and forth little lines within that stripe to sink in the white stripe and hopefully the red stripe will be a little bit more puffy. I think that'll give some really nice uh, dimension to that block. Next we're going to move over to the pieced star block. Again with my heat erasing pen I'm just going to give myself some marks in the center of this block. I want to quilt two squares within that square. This will help me stay nice and straight and keep it pretty uniform looking. And then I'm going to take my pen and a circle template and I'm going to just draw my quilting design in the background of this block. First, we'll start by quilting the center square of this block. Just a stitch in the ditch around that square. Now we'll stitch in the ditch around the star area. And now we can go back and quilt the little design that I drew with the heat erasing pen. You can see how the free motion foot really speeds things up. I'm not having to shift and move the entire quilt as I'm quilting this block and that really speeds up the process. Coming to the inside where we marked the lines, the little squares within the square. I'm going to use the free motion foot for this as well. And although I have sped up this video, I really kind of slowed down <laughs> and tried to stay as straight as possible while doing that part. And this is this finished block. Now we'll move over to the firecrackers. I want to quilt each one of the two different firecrackers a little bit differently just to add uh, some interest. So I'll start by stitching around the firecracker. And then I will quilt inside the top of this firecracker. And then move down to the bottom. We'll jump over to the next one. Again, I'm going to stitch around the entire firecracker. And then the top, we're just going to do a simple outline. 
And for the base of this firecracker, I'm going to play again with the stripes in the fabric and quilt each one of those stripes individually. Then for the background of this block, I thought I would just do some horizontal wavy lines back and forth, back and forth, just to add some texture and to quilt down this larger block. I'm just quilting right over the satin stitch we did for the little sparks of the firecracker. And I'm really pleased because I don't know if you remember when I was doing the satin stitch of this block and uh, I didn't have the tearaway stabilizer completely underneath of that red firecracker up at the very top and there was a small little pucker. That just quilts right on out. You can't see that pucker once we start quilting it and it looks nice and flat and so I'm really pleased about that. And I'm just filling up this entire background with the wavy lines back and forth. Then we're going to move over to the white and blue striped block. Just like we did with the other one, I'm going to stitch in the ditch and then just do a knockdown stitch or quilting in the white stripe so that the blue stripes are a little bit more puffy and pronounced. I really think the two layers of batting is adding a nice texture to this quilt. I'm super pleased with that. Next, we're going to move to the top right portion of our quilt and we're going to quilt the block that has the three stars. I'm just going to base the edges of my quilt. And I'm having so much fun with the designs in this fabric. I thought I would quilt each one of these little stripes in the background individually as well. And I'm just traveling around uh, the block. And when I get to the star, I will quilt around the star. And I can also travel around the stars moving from stripe to stripe when needed to. Now these three stars really pop off of that background. We're gonna move over to the home block in the other top corner. I'm gonna baste the edges along this block. And I thought for this block, I'm gonna remove all of the basting stitches. And I'm gonna do a cross hatching just using some painter's tape to keep myself all lined up and nice and straight starting in one of the bottom corners and then moving my tape after each one of the lines that I've quilted through. This will give me nice and straight lines that are pretty uniform. I think the crosshatch quilting is a classic quilting look and I thought because this quilt is a sampler that this would be, I had to include the cross hatching in at least one of these blocks. 
I am not stitching around the, uh, the letters individually. This block is just getting a crosshatch quilting. If you just quilted the whole quilt with crosshatch quilting, I think that would look pretty amazing. So once we get one side done, we'll turn it around and come back the other side. And then to help move things along, um, I will finish up cross hatching on this block off camera. We're going to move down to this last portion. And while I still have my walking foot in from doing the cross hatching, I'm going to base the edges at the bottom of this quilt. I'll put back on my free motion foot because for me, it is just so much faster. I'm going to stitch in the ditch between each one of these sections in this block number 10. I hope this has been helpful or at least inspiring to see how I treated each one of the blocks. It did something a little bit different to each one of them. At the bottom, I thought I would bring in some painter's tape again and just give myself some straight lines within the white sections of these stripes at the bottom. So total time for me doing all this quilting, I started around nine o'clock in the morning and I finished up around one o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, and it was pretty much solid quilting through all of that time. Of course, I am filming videos, so moving the camera and things like that, but there we are, we're all done. So let's go ahead and square up this quilt. I'm gonna be using my larger 15 inch ruler Using the lines that are on the ruler, I'm going to match them up to some seams in my blocks. I'm going to trim the four corners first. And then finish off each side just like that. I will trim the corner again. And then cut that three or four inch section right in the middle. And I'm going to repeat that process all the way around my quilt and this will make it nice and square. And after you've squared off your quilt and trimmed away all the extra batting and backing, we're ready to make some binding and I thought I would bring you along for binding this quilt as well. Now I do my binding all kinds of different ways. We are going to go old school and very traditional with the binding of this quilt. I have cut my binding at two and a half inches wide. I have several strips because I did have to cut from leftover parts of what I was working with. Each one of these little strips of binding are getting pressed in half, folded in half and pressed individually just like this. Just press it in half from one end to the next. And then we're going to bring them over to the sewing machine and join them. So now we can open up this binding strip. We're going to start with the binding on the bottom with the fold side up, pretty side up. Your next piece of binding comes in pretty side down or the fold side down. And we're going to sew right down the middle giving ourselves a mitered seam. We'll do it one more time together. Open up that binding, the fold pops up, pretty side up. 
Then the fold goes down, pretty side down. You can even use a pen if this helps you stay nice and straight and you can mark that diagonal line that goes from corner to corner. That might be helpful so that you stay nice and straight. This will give us some nice flat binding. Let's do it one more time. Open up the binding, pretty side up, pretty side down. Right down the middle with the seam. And now we're gonna bring it over to the pressing board one more time. At each one of the seams, we're going to just take a pair of scissors and we're gonna trim away this little triangle bit, leaving about a quarter of an inch seam allowance. We will press that seam allowance open so that it's nice and flat. Just open up that seam and give it a quick press. Then we can just put the binding back down. And I like to go back and just press this one more time right in that seam area just to make sure that binding is nice and flat. We're gonna do that for each one of the seams that it took you to join your binding. Again, just leaving about a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Pressing that seam open. and then repressing the binding nice and flat. I will finish up my binding and then we're ready to add this to our quilt top. Now that our binding is made, I've put the walking foot back on just to help feed this quilt through and add the binding. So I'm gonna line up the binding with the raw edges of the binding to the raw edges of the quilt. I like to pin down my binding. I give myself about eight to 10 inches pinned to the quilt and below that bottom pin is where we're gonna start sewing on this binding. Now we'll be using a quarter inch seam to attach this binding all the way around to the front side of the quilt. Now I do binding all kinds of ways, y'all, all kinds of ways. A lot of the times when I'm doing my t-shirt quilts, I'll actually attach the binding to the back side of the quilt and then fold it over to the front. But we're going very traditional with this quilt and sewing it to the front first. As we come to each one of the corners, I just miter the binding. Do a little back stitch when starting off and then sew to the other corner. And I'll do one more corner with you. I do have a few different tutorials here on my channel where I slow down quite a bit with binding. And y'all, there is not a shortage of binding videos here on YouTube by some really fantastic creators as well. So if I'm moving too fast in this video, I really encourage you to find a video uh, that goes the pace in which you need to do if you've never binded a quilt before. I know I'm moving along pretty quick in this video. Now I've worked myself all the way around to where we started. I'm going to trim off a little section at the end of this binding, a little bit of the extra. I'm going to use that to measure off the amount that I need to leave to join these two ends. 
And I do have a detailed video all about joining these two ends as well. And I slow down in that video. Uh, so if I'm, again, if I'm going too quick, I really encourage you to check out that video. I always like to double check that I sewed it going in the right direction before I trim off that extra. And now I just have a short section to finish sewing down the binding on the front side of the quilt. And then we're gonna move over to the pressing board. I wanna add two hangers to the back side of my quilt up at the top. So I took two squares of fabric that were five inches by five inches and I pressed them just folded on the diagonal and I'm going to add those in the top two corners on the back of my quilt before I fold over my binding. Now to help me out and it's like having 5,000 little fingers helping to hold that binding down, I am using some Elmer's glue wall and glue basting that binding down. I give the edges of the quilt a quick press. I add a little bit of glue, add my top triangle and the top two corners, fold over that binding and then dry that glue with a good hot iron. And sometimes I do steam uh, the edge of this binding just to help dry that glue a little bit faster. I'm going to add my little tag with my logo into the binding. So I've just glued that and then folded the, the binding right over top of it. Just working my way around. I believe we're coming to the last corner. I'm going to tell you what, if you struggle with uh, binding your quilt, you might want to try glue basting your binding. It's like having a whole bunch of helpers <laughs> hold that binding nice and perfect as you're stitching along. Now we're coming back to the sewing machine one more time and I'm going to move the needle over just a little bit. I am stitching in the ditch right next to that binding all the way around my quilt. That's gonna be pretty. For this part, because uh, let's see, we have the quilt back. We have uh, the binding. We have two layers of batting and the quilt top. I have increased the stitch length to a 3.0 for the length, just to help feed this quilt nice and even through there. Even though I'm using the walking foot, I do think it helps to increase the stitch length just a little bit. So we have really jam packed this video with a lot of stuff to finish up this quilt. I just wanna thank you so much for being patient with me as I have sped up this video so that it doesn't take that long for you to watch. I've enjoyed this series so much. One thing I wanted to mention, because I don't know that I've mentioned this, maybe I have in previous videos, but uh, I do think this pattern lends perfectly for changing out the theme of the quilt with different applique and different fabrics. So here is our binding. Here's what it looks like from the front and the back. I think it's fantastic. Here's my little label sewn into the binding on the back. It even has some little washing instructions. It's gonna be a wall quilt. I don't know that it ever needs the washing instructions, but they're on my label, so they're there. And here's the little corners where you could put a, uh, a wooden dowel or maybe a curtain rod in there to help hang this up on the wall. You could even embroider on these before adding them to the back of your quilt as a quilt label if you wanted to. So I thought I would show you uh, now that we're slowing down a little bit, 
the back side of this quilt with the pieced backing. I love that so much. I wanted you to see the texture of the quilting from the back side. I think the back is almost as fun as the front. <laughs> A lot of the times I forget to show the back of my projects, so I really wanted to make sure that you saw that uh, and that I didn't forget to show that. Now we'll flip this quilt over and we'll take a look at the front. There might be a jump stitch or two that I missed while trimming, <laughs> so you might see some stitches that still need to come out. But here we are. She is all finished. I love how each one of the blocks is sort of uh, unique and different. I did iron and remove the, uh, the little lines that I used to quilt the stars. I really love the dimension with the two layers of batting in there. I don't know. I'm someone who likes to feel the quilts. <laughs> I have a hard time going to quilt shows because you're not supposed to touch the quilts and I want to touch the quilts. And so this is my quilt. I can touch it, touch it, touch it. I love the different textures and uh, yeah, I think this is going to hang so well. I just want to thank you so much for following along in this series. Thank you for sharing progress of your quilts as you've been making the blocks and putting them together. Uh, all the links for pretty much everything are down in the description box, y'all. There's a playlist where all of these videos are grouped together. There's a link for the pattern. There's a link to Creative Crew. This was uh, June's free pattern for Patreon. So thank you so much for all of my Patreon supporters. And thank y'all again just for following along. It's been so much fun. Can't wait to see you for the next project. Until then, have fun creating and sewing. Bye, everybody.